Today we're going to explore how much color can you put into a gray mix and how does that change the temperature. So let's get started. So here are all the different color grays we're going to make. My goal was to insert as much color as I could into the color gray as possible. So there are some warm grays which lean toward yellows and cool grays which lean toward violets. And so now let's start the process. All right, I'm going to start us off slow and then at some point I'll speed this up because sometimes I know watching paint is, is, can be in, incredibly frustrating. The first thing that I do, well first let me explain that I'm painting a glass of clear water. So on a gray background and a gray floor. So there really is no color. I'm going to have to find the color or invent the color. So I put a dab of cerulean blue there because I know I want cerulean blue to probably be about as dark as I want to go, although I do end up going darker. And I know I want to put some cerulean in somewhere. I just don't know where yet. The other thing that I've done is I've put some Naples yellow on the places that I know I want to keep white because I don't use masking fluid. It was watered down Naples yellow. Those are just place savers, so I don't, um, you know, drive over something I don't want to drive over. All right, the next thing was to mix up a gray. Now, the gray in the background is the darkest element, but I don't want a gray. In other words, what I really want is I want a color. So I mixed up a cerulean blue. I inserted some orange into it and also a little bit of Naples yellow and tried to neutralize that cerulean blue as much as I could so it would read as a gray but still has quite a bit of blue in it. So in other words I wanted that background to be cooler. Um, that's what I'm really interested in here is color and temperature. So I felt like that was a pretty good gray. It is, it, it is grayer on the left hand side than it is on the right hand side. It's almost moving into cerulean on the right hand side which I'm aware of. Because like I said, I wanted to insert as much color as I possibly could, even though there's no color there. All right, the next step is I'm going from um, my darkest to the next darkest element. I know that seeing through the glass, it is going to look grayer because you're looking through the glass. So I, not, I don't mean darker, I mean grayer. And so I knew that I didn't want this mix to be as um, blue as what I put in the background. So I neutralized it with a certain amount of probably yellow, probably Naples yellow in there. So it's warmer. It's a little bit lighter, just barely a tiny bit. If I squint, it's hardly at all, maybe half a step. And that's what I wanted. I want to lose the edges and just have this thing start to appear. But I knew that what's inside the glass needed to appear at this point to be warmer than what was behind the glass. So. Behind the glass is going to be cooler, meaning there's more blue in the mix, and in the glass is going to have more yellow or, or orange because it's going to be warmer in there. So well, that's what I'm playing with here. Yes, I'm playing with darks and lights, but I'm really more than anything dealing with um, warm and cool issues. Now I need to dry things and get centered again because it took a, quite a bit of concentration to just to make those two mixes. Now I've, I've dried things and, and in my own head I'm thinking, okay, now I can really get down to business. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to search a little bit here. First I decide, do I want it to be warm or cool? And there's my value finder. And I must have decided it was cooler. I must have seen a spot that was cooler. And so cooler means I'm going to move my gray toward being a little bit bluer. But it was too blue, so I made another mix. You can see that's moving a little bit more toward violet, so it's just a little bit warmer because it has a little bit of red in it, which was a conscious decision. Ah, I see, because it's that dark element where the um, where you can see a darkness in the water there. Now, I knew not to match it to be the same color as the background. If I was to match it to be the exact same color, then I'm going to lose my uh, any kind of transparency because it is not the same color, because you're looking through the glass. So it can't be the exact same color as the background. It, it, just going through the water changes the, not the, um, not the value, but the grayness of the, of, of the liquid. 
That's a strange thing about glass, because you're not actually painting anything. The glass is only invisible and the water is invisible. You're only painting the refractions and the reflections that happen from the, uh, the glass and the water itself. It's a very strange thing. It's something I love because you're really not painting anything. You're painting something that isn't really visually there, which is kind of a cool idea. All right, so I'm mixing a lot. I'm doing a lot of mixing here and trying to find a lighter gray, but it has to be exactly lighter. I can't, I need it to just be a little bit lighter than what I put in so far. I put a test dab in there. I didn't like it. It's got to go away. This is not a time to have any kind of error. Ah, warmer. I needed it to be warmer. So I would have taken that mix and just added a little bit of probably Naples yellow to it. It needed to be warmer and lighter. But, you know, light and dark is all relative here, only as it corresponds to what's right next to it and every other decision I've made until now. So something came in. I'm, I'm not going to go back and, and start the narration again, even though there was a little blip there. All right, so there we go. So, like I said, you can see how much warmer that gray is than the dark, almost violet gray I put in. And it's really strange because at, by this time, these grays, they're all grays, but you start to also see them as colors. And that's what's really kind of cool about this exercise is that you, you can sort of see a violet, you can sort of see a red. There it's a little darker right under the liquid. And I know I want to lose some edges, so I don't want to get precious here. I want to use as few strokes as possible. And I'm working on Arsh paper, which is cold press. And the brush I'm using is probably a 16 flat. Now I'm going for my lighter elements, but it can't be as light as the Naples yellow I put in at first, because that's going to be what is uh, ends up being my, the highlights inside the glass. So it's lighter and warmer. And you can see, if you look at those grays, you can see there are warm grays and cooler grays. No question about that. Now I started thinking about why did I want to do this in the first place? And I thought, well, because I wanted to play with warm and cool, and I wanted to see how well I could discriminate in terms of darks and lights. And now I also wanted to, like I said, input as much color as it's possible to put in. So I'm also conscious of the color wheel and realizing if I can make something orange happen in here, because there's a lot of blue in my gray mixes, that could also insert a little bit of a color element. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going underneath the glass, it's a little darker, grabbing some, just a little bit of cadmium orange. There it is, that little bit of orange is just going to give that shadow underneath or reflection or whatever it is. There, see that, that orange, just drop it in there because it's going to look brighter than you would think it was because everything else is relative to it because it was gray. Anything gray is going to look, will, will make this uh, orange look more orangey. I don't know if orangey is a word. Well, it is today. Now I can get busy with the rest of the um, where the glass sits. And I knew I wanted to tilt that to warm, warm and orange because it's quite a bit lighter. All right, now I'm going to really speed things up because there was a lot of thinking time that went on here and you don't need to see that. So this is now four times as fast as I usually work. I'm going to put in my darkest darks, and also I think I put a color spot of value. I think I'm going to put a piece of cerulean blue in. Or if I look really closely, I think I already did it. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I didn't make note of that. When you see it in, in real life, that one spot of cerulean blue stands out, which is what I, what I wanted originally. I knew from the very beginning I had a commitment to putting some cerulean in there. The background need a little bit of darkness relative to everything else that I had done before. And now I have a couple of those darker spots. And let's see, I'm doing a few final adjustments here, but I don't want to do too, too much adjusting because the decisions I made were strategic all the way through. If I change the strategy now, everything else will be off. And so now we'll look at, at the finished piece, which I feel pretty good about. From a distance, when you stand back, there is transparency, and that's what I wanted. So the goal was to insert and make as many warm and cool grays as I could in order to create a form. And I think I did. The orange is definitely sticking out there, which I like. Uh, the cerulean is almost, oh, there you can see it. The cerulean on the upper right hand side of the glass does show up on, on this particular one, which is, which is good because that's really true to the way the, the, the painting looks at the end of the day. 
So remember to keep the white your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mass for color. See you next time. Bye-bye.